Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, an extraordinary child was born. He was the son of mighty Zeus and Semele, a mortal woman. Dionysus was destined to become one of the most important and powerful gods of ancient Greece. And although he had no bow and arrow, no spear, and carried no sword, it wasn't long before he conquered humanity by simply offering people the vine and wine. I'm Deborah Myberg, Master of Wine, and I'm here in Greece, the land of gods, to take you on a special journey. From north to south, we will be introduced to Greek wine in all its splendor, taste amazing varieties, while enjoying some of the most breathtaking scenery in the world. Stiniamis. Constantinos, it's just so great to see you in Greece on your area, in your area of expertise. You have written so much about Greek wine. I've written a lot. I could do a lot more. Um, I think it's one of my main duties to try to convince people that Greece is producing fine wine. Greece is producing fine wine by any count. The whole thing is letting enough people know. So this is my job, I consider this to be something that I have to do that. And it seems that you are sort of getting into that role as well. <laughs> so it's very happy to be, to be seeing that. <laughs> Eastern Macedonia. Although not traditionally a PDO zone, it boasts some of the best equipped and contemporary wineries you can find in the country. Some of the best Greek wines are made here, and the varieties are indigenous, like Assertico, Rodites, Agiorgitico, Malagosia, but also foreign, like Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and even Semillon and Syrah. Here in this region, there's an interesting wine museum where you can watch stories unfold through collections of corkscrews, bottles, vessels, and pieces of an ancient Greek symposium. The wines of Kavala and Drama are especially interesting. The location of the vineyards underneath the Pageo mountain and the Aegean breeze coming from the south and the perfect exposure produce wines with grace and freshness, intense and ripe fruity aromas. Drama wines have a touch of European nobility and refined elegance about them. Kavala wines are closer to the New World style, rich and exuberant. Μπελόνος ο ελληνικός έχει εξελιχθεί ποσοτικά ε, και ποιοτικά πάρα πολύ τα τελευταία 30 χρόνια. Ε, σήμερα η Ελλάδα έχει περίπου 1.300.000 στρέμματα φτεμένα με αμπέλια, εκ των οποίων το 55% περίπου είναι τα ενωπίσιμα στα φύλλα, δηλαδή περίπου 700.000 στρέμματα. Ε, βέβαια σε σχέση με παλιότερα ο αμπελόνας έχει και πολλές ποιοτικέ διαφορές. Ε, καταρχήν, ένα μεγάλο μέρο των μπελώνα σήμερα βρίσκεται σε ζώνε ονομασία προέλευση, προστατευόμενη ονομασία προέλευση και προστατευόμενη γεωγραφική ένδειξη, δηλαδή έχουμε λιγότερου αμπελώνε που παράγουν επί τραπέζιου σύνου. Επίση, ο αμπελώνα έχει εξελιχθεί πάρα πολύ ποικιλιακά. Κατά τη δεκαετία του 80 και του 90, πολλέ ξενικέ ποικιλίε και προσφάτω πολλέ ελληνικέ, πιο σπάνιε γηγενεί ποικιλίε έχουν προσθεθεί στον ελληνικό αμπελώνα και τον έχουν κάνει πολύ πιο πλούσιο ε, ποικιλιακά. Ε, Βεβαίω, ε, ο αμπελόνα αυτό είναι και πολύ πιο συστηματικό από ό,τι παλιότερα. Ε, σήμερα οι περισσότεροι αμπελόνε είναι φυτεμένοι και καλλιεργούνται κατά τα σύγχρονα αμπελουργικά πρότυπα, γραμμικοί, ε, με πολλέ εργασίε μηχανοποιημένε, πράγμα που δίνει δυνατότητα για έλεγχο τη ποιότητα πρώτη ύλη με μια αποδεκτή ποσοτικά παραγωγή, αλλά και εξοικονόμηση κόστου για τον παραγωγό. 
ε, οπωσδήποτε συγκρίνοντα με έναν αμπελώνα όπω είναι οι 200 αναπτυσσόμενοι αμπελώνε τη Κίνα ή τη Αυστραλία ή τη Χιλή, ε, ο ελληνικό αμπελώνα δεν έχει αυτή τη δυναμική. Όμω ε, πλεονεκτή στο γεγονό ότι έχει ε, μικρά αμπελοτεμάχια, μικροπεριβάλλοντα, ε, πολύ μεγάλο ποικιλιακό πλούτο και τη δυνατότητα να καλλιεργεί ε, πολλών διαφορετικών ειδών ποικιλίε από ξενικέ μέχρι ε, ελληνικέ. And our next stop, Western Macedonia. We are in the heart of Xinomarvo land. The vineyards on this estate are a breath away from the beautiful Bermion mountain. The altitudes here range from 50 to 450 meters. The climate is semi-continental. And the soils range from limestone to clay loam and sand. These combined with the inclinations and slopes give a wonderful variety and notably distinctive Xenobravo. Kiriannis, vines are everywhere in Greece. Why is that? Well, uh, that's a very, very long story. Uh, Greece, because of its... Of its uh, Uh, geographical uh, uh, structure because of the uh, climate which is influenced by the sea and by the high mountains, the Balkans, which is the, the Alps of the south and southeastern Europe. All this uh, climate together with the, with, the, with the soil, I would say that uh, this is kind of paradise. So in paradise, whatever you do, uh, it flourishes. And uh, having also in mind that the uh, vine is a very, very strong and, and very persistent culture. Uh, this is why Greece has everywhere vines. And this is probably one of the reasons that uh, uh, these, these differences that you can find in the Greek uh, surroundings uh, is why there are so many uh, varieties. We've got uh, Uh, around 350 native varieties, which is a huge number. It's a huge number for such a small area. Huh? You got so many, so many beautiful things, so little in quantity, that I would, uh, I could even say that Greece is like a, 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 an area of diamonds. You can find diamonds all over, uh, not too many. I mean, not in, in quantity. You just don't dig and find diamonds. You try hard and you, you can see where the diamonds are and you can enjoy them. This amazing landscape is surrounded by beautiful vineyards caressed by the sun and produces great wines mainly from the Xenomavro variety. Xenomavro, or as others like to say, Xenomavro, or even Xenomavro, is considered by many to be the most noble indigenous variety of northern Greece. Mm. Ripe dark red fruits, crisp acidity, nice dry tannins, and a savory dried herb element that makes it a great food match. Το Ξινόμαυρο είναι μια ποικιλία που καλλιεργείται στην Κεντρική και Δυτική Μακεδονία. Καλλιεργείται πάρα πολλά χρόνια, για το λόγο αυτό παρουσιάζει και πάρα πολύ μεγάλη παραλλακτικότητα. Είναι ποικιλία η οποία είναι μοναδική, ε, κυρίως όσον αφορά το αρωματικό της δυναμικό. Δεν υπάρχει άλλη ποικιλία ε, στον κόσμο θα έλεγα που να έχει αυτά τα αρώματα τη ντομάτας και της ελιά που δεν απαντούνται πουθενά άλλο σε καμιά άλλη ε, ποικιλία. Είναι από τις ποικιλίε τις οποίες την αναγνωρίζεις από το άρωμά τη. Ε, εκτός του αρωματικού της δυναμικού που είναι ιδιαίτερο, ιδιαίτερο επίσης θεωρείται η υψηλή της οξύτητα και οι τανίνες της, οι οποίες ε, βοηθούν η οξύτητα και οι τανίνες στη μακρόχρονη παλαιόση των κρασιών. Δοκιμάζεις ένα ξινόμαυρο του 68 και είναι ένα κρασί ζωντανό που το αισθάνεσαι και αυτό αφήνει νομίζω ε, 
κυρίω τον γνώστη του κρασιού, για την αλήθεια ότι είναι ποικιλία που προορίζεται για γνώστε καταναλωτέ, αφήνει το σημάδι τη. Επίσης θα λέγαμε ότι είναι ο ορισμός του τερουάρ, το, το κρασί του ξινόμαυρου. Στην ίδια περιοχή, ανάλογα με το έδαφος στο οποίο καλλιεργείται το ξινόμαυρο, μπορεί να δώσει διαφορετικού χαρακτήρα κρασί. Είναι πραγματικά ο ορισμός του τερουάρ. Ε, ακόμα και γειτονικοί αμπελώνες, γειτονικοί νοποιοί, τα κρασιά τους είναι τελείως διαφορετικά και αυτό είναι μία από τις ομορφιές του ξινόμαυρου. Pinot Mavro is challenging to cultivate and mature, making it a demanding grape variety for the winemaker. But once it's tamed, it delivers complex aromas and vegetal accents of tomato and olive. And when it's young, ripe red fruit. One thing became clear in tasting this selection of wines. Xenon Mavro is a variety capable of delivering a wide range of styles, even sparkling and rosé. It's a variety that really reflects the vintage the site and the philosophy of the winemaker. And even better, it changes and evolves in the glass. Modern Nausa PDO is deeper in color, softer in tannins, fuller bodied and richer in flavor. As it ages, Xenomavro leaves less of the fruit on the palate and more spicy vegetal aromas. Xenomavro is capable of a wide range of styles. When from Amindeo, which is an area between two lakes at 600 to 700 meters. It's higher up, so the styles are lighter and far less tannic. When from Gumenisa, which is lower altitude, the wines are affected by the northern Aegean and so show more primary red fruit character. This is also thanks to the blend with Nagoska variety. These wines also can have a rustic dried fruit flavor. Well, I'm finding it incredibly fascinating because there's so many interesting indigenous varieties, uh, sometimes a little difficult to pronounce, <laughs> but delivering fantastic wines. And it's, it's just really exciting to see uh, grapes that can produce a flavor and a character that's intensely unique. Okay, this is exactly a key point. Greek wine is small, is tiny in terms of production. I'll give you an example. The whole of Greece is producing some like 30% less than just Bordeaux. Mm. Could you imagine that? A whole country producing a lot less wine than just one French winemaking region. So you can have Bordeaux wine everywhere around the world. You have Bordeaux wine. Mm everywhere around the world. Especially in my part of the world. Especially in your <laughs> part of the world. Um, how many people can claim that they have a Santorini wine from Asyptico in their wine lists? Mm. A Xenomavro from Naus and Aminton. Greek wine is unique and then Greek wine is rare. If your part of the world gets into Greek wine big time, then I'm sure we'll have great problem enjoying Greek wine in Greece because everything will be shipped over there. Another key point for me is that what I call diversity, you can actually taste. Mm. So we have different grape varieties, we have obscure wine making practices, obscure wine producing regions, but then you go to a number of other countries and you come across all that on paper, but you start tasting the wines and the wines could be Cabernet lookalikes. There is a diversity on paper, but this is not translated in what I have in my glass. I had to draw on a whole new vocabulary. Mm, the fantastic. flavors are unusual and, and not, say, the standard red fruit, standard purple fruit descriptors I would pull out of my hat for some of the classic international varieties. Exactly. You know, it's... Um, okay, it's easy if you just start with the four big ones, okay? So you have Mosophilero, from Mantinia, light, floral, high acid, but yet extremely elegant and aromatic. And then on the other hand, you have a Citico for Santorini, 
full throttle, still a high acidity but with masses of body, masses of extract, more textural, less aromatic. If you like one, then you won't be so keen on the other. If you enjoy Aceptico, I'm sure you might have a bit of trouble with Moscofilero. So it's just wherever you are, wherever you are, your likings will have a great variety for you. Or what Somewhere you're eating. Increase. Or what, what you're eating. eating. <laughs> so the same thing goes with the two big red grape varieties, Xenomoro and Ayurgitico. Xenomoro, high acid, high tannin, um, non-fruit driven, but uh, very complex. And then on the other hand, you have Ayurgitico, which is ripe, soft, with lots of primary fruit. So again, you are going to like either the one or the other. I can't even describe how excited I am to be here underneath Olympus, the mountain of the gods. There's a sort of supernatural aura in the atmosphere here. And looking at this view, it's no wonder the gods chose this place as their home. I feel like the gods are watching me now while I'm tasting this Rapsani PDO. All around me and all around the mountain there are valleys full of vines, producing some of the best Thessaly wines. A good example of Rapsani is what a good Greek wine stands for. Mature fruit, herbal and spicy aromas with velvety tannins. Rapsani is the most significant PDO zone. They produce fascinating red wines based on Sinomaro, and two other indigenous varieties, a blend of one-third each. Thessaly is largely flat, so its finest vineyards are grown on the slopes of Olympus. The area produces a wide range of red varieties, including an interesting indigenous variety called Limignona. There is a very, very big misunderstanding about Greece. People come to Greece, they go to some holiday resorts, we have a lot, and they're great. And they're beautiful. <laughs> and, they're beautiful. and then you go across these areas that are um, quite a bit hot, quite a bit dry, and then some of the people that are semi-familiar, semi-knowledgeable about wine say, like, mm, Greece is a great country to go on holidays, but it's too hot to make fine quality wine. Mm. Well, they weren't standing on Olympus shivering like I was. <laughs> okay. Um, we had um, a visit of uh, the Institute of Masters of Wine. 24 Masters of Wine came a couple of months ago. It was late April. Mm. And we were standing exactly on this point, And they were amazed that the mountains were full of snow. Mm. They were expecting apparently to have uh, the whole of Greece being on 40 degrees Celsius by the end of April, but they got snow. So you even have Olympic skiers. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they were amazed by that fact. You have a lot of places all over Greece that do not enjoy what you have in your mind as a typical Mediterranean climate. As we go down south, we find the valley of Atalandi, one of the most ancient vineyards in Greece. 
The production of wine was cut abruptly when the phylloxera louse destroyed the vines, and the area only recovered in the 70s to produce some magnificent wines. There is a huge variety of soils, microclimates, and altitudes that you can find here, giving a lot of different choices to the wine producer in terms of winemaking styles and varieties. The Greek varieties cultivated here are Assyrtical, Malagusia, as well as the international varieties, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Merlot. The history of Greek wine starts with the dawn of civilization, where in prehistoric times, wild vines grew naturally in this land. Vines have been cultivated throughout the country for four to five thousand years. Only Greece has a god of vines. You don't find a god of wine all over. And it means that Greece is a winemaking uh, area of precious vines. And then eventually, Dionysus was a semi-god because uh, he was the son of, of uh, a god, the, 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 the normal uh, woman. Uh, and after years, he became god. So uh, all these things, you know, uh, they come, if you fit them together, you come to understand that uh, wine in Greece is so much uh, connected with everyday life, the soil, the, the atmosphere, the sun, everything is, is uh, wine is everywhere. The Greek wines reached the height of their glory during the Golden Age, where Greek commerce was expanding. The arts and crafts essential for making wine like pottery were also flourishing, and the worship of Dionysus called for special rituals involving wine. It's interesting to have a close look at these antique implements used to make containers for wine. The tools might have changed over the centuries, but one thing has remained the same, the shape of the barrel. I'm in one of the most legendary wine-making and largest wine-producing areas in all of Greece, Nemea. The mythology in Nemea is again so rich, like its red wines. Nemea is the most significant PDO zone for the red variety Agiorgitico. The region is divided into three zones according to altitude, each producing different qualities and characteristics of the grape. It's a multi-dimensional variety that can produce wines in a wide range of styles, from fresh, crisp rosé to medium-bodied, vivacious, soft reds with velvety tannins, but also deep, complex red wines that can be aged remarkably, and even sweet wines. The Agiorgitico variety takes a long time to mature, so the grapes are usually harvested mid-September. Agiorgitico's capacity for aging is notable, meaning if the winemakers play their cards right, tending to the vines carefully, containing yields, and if winemaking techniques adhere to the quality standards with careful use of oak, Agiorgitico can produce grand wines with complex aromas and an extraordinary palate that can stand the test of time. Great to see you and to be able to taste some wines with you, Sarah. You've been traveling around Greece for a while yeah. and looking for material to share with others in China yes. about Greece. What have you found so far? Do you think Greek wine has a place in China? 
Yeah, I totally sure. Uh, Great wine has the future in China, and you know there has some the diversity grape, and I'm sure they are quite matching for some Chinese food. North to south, west to east. <laughs> in Greece, we do enjoy food. We do that, as you already seen. Pretty much in Chinese style, so everything on the table. Yes, with ro- no, <laughs> and a lot of it. <laughs> and a lot of it. So, with that, we have maybe three or four solid millennia of matching food and wine on the table as the experience. I'm not talking about food and wine matching things like oh, high acid wine must go with high acid food. Forget about that. It's about having food. Great company, great surroundings, wine on the table. They are not wines that、uh, were made just to impress, to show off in a wine competition. Although we are receiving a lot of awards, these are wines to complement food. They are food-friendly wines. And when I'm talking about food, I don't only mean Greek or Mediterranean food. For example, nothing goes better than Asian food than a glass of Moscovillo or, or Malagusia. Uh, or Indian food and retzina, two very strong flavors that are a great match. I think that these people is amazing people for me.、Uh, they are so、uh, many fiction and viticulture professor and even the warm guy, and they really know how to enjoy the life and to how to show this feeling to the one lover. Yes, exactly, and、uh, I think the vineyard is so beautiful. It's quite different. From the、uh, French and even some kind of Australia, you know that.、Mm-hmm. I think most Chinese wine lover would love this. Can't wait. <laughs> Something that I've noticed is just how well equipped and modern the wineries have been.、Uh, super hygienic, very clean, very well managed.、Mm-hmm. What was your impression? What were you thinking when you saw them?、Uh, I think it's、um, uh, when I first saw them. I think it's quite have the interesting story inside.、Mm-hmm. I find it's so warm. I find it definitely peace.、Mm-hmm. Wow, it's amazing. Το όραμά μας για το ελληνικό κρασί στο εξωτερικό είναι να αποκτήσει μια ταυτότητα και μια εικόνα ποιότητας και αξίας. Αυτό μπορεί να το πετύχουμε όταν αναδείξουμε όλα αυτά τα στοιχεία που διαφοροποιούν τον ελληνικό αμπελόνα, το ελληνικό κρασί. Έχουμε να ανταγωνιστούμε χώρες με μεγάλη παράδοση στην παραγωγή και στην εμπορία του κρασιού. Και εμεί θα πρέπει να αντιπαραθέσουμε και να ανταπεξέλθουμε σε αυτόν τον ανταγωνισμό κρασιά ιδιαίτερα και μοναδικά. Τα στοιχεία που εφόσον τα αναδείξουμε μας διαφοροποιούν είναι ο τεράστιος πικιλιακός πλούτος που σαν χώρα έχουμε έχουμε γιγενές ελληνικές πικιλίες με ιδιαίτερα χαρακτηριστικά ε, μάλιστα ένας μεγάλος αριθμός από αυτές τις πικιλίες ακόμα δεν έχει διερευνηθεί είναι οι ήπιες καλλιεργητικές πρακτικές και ο σεβασμός στο περιβάλλον που ως Έλληνες αμπολιουργοί ακολουθούμε ε, το καταπληκτικό ανάγλυφο ε, και η γεωγραφία της, της ελληνικής υπαίθρου που σε συνδυασμό με την υφή των εδαφών και τις κλιματικές συνθήκες δημιουργούν καταπληκτικά αμπελοτόπια και θα ήθελα να επισημάνω ιδιαίτερο σημαντικό και τον ανθρώπινο παράγοντα ότι ο σημερινός, ο σύγχρονος Έλληνας συνοποιός, ο σύγχρονος Έλληνας επιστήμονας, γεωπόνος ή τεϊνολόγος με πολύ μεράκι και με πολύ αγάπη βάζουν τη δική τους φραγίδα για να παράγουν εξαίρετα και μοναδικά κρασιά. The、uh, presence of Greek wine in the U.S. restaurant、uh, has been very successful uh, lately. Uh, according to the Wine and Spirits uh, uh, restaurant poll,、uh, for three consecutive years the presence of Greek wine has been so much、uh, better that now there's a separate category for Greece, and Greece is. Closing down on、uh, much more well-known、uh, and established、uh, countries such as、uh, New Zealand, especially the trade in the U.S.,、uh, they consider Greek rosé some of the best、uh, in the world.、Uh, they talk of the French wines from Provence and the rosé from Greece.
We're still in Nemea in this gorgeous winery and about to discover more wines characteristic of this region, but also the Peloponnese and Ionian Islands. Wine is made in every part of Greece, and you find styles from light white, full white, crisp rosé, juicy reds, complex aged, full-bodied reds, and sweet wines, indigenous grape varieties, international grape varieties, and blends of both. The list goes on and on, and to taste them all is almost like a Herculean labor. A wine lover can not only come to taste the wines, but learn about its history, enjoy the beautiful views, and taste the phenomenal cuisine. The Greek wine industry has taken many steps forward and really modernized itself the past 20 years. They've invested heavily in equipment, focused on quality, and fully revolutionized the Greek winemaking tradition. The combination of cutting-edge technology combined with the most important material, the grapes, and the gorgeous scenery makes for phenomenal wines. Το καλό κρασί γίνεται στο αμπέλι, δηλαδή είναι απαραίτητη μια η εξασφάλιση μιας ποιότητας στην πρώτη ύλη. Και αυτό είναι δεν αφορά μόνο τα ζάχαρα ή τα οξέα, μόνο είναι τις αρωματικές ενώσεις, τις φαινολικές ενώσεις που δίνουν τα γευστικά χαρακτηριστικά, την ικανότητα στην παλαιώση. Έτσι λοιπόν, ο βασικότερος στόχος του παραγωγού, την οποίου, είναι να πετύχει ένα σταφύλι με τις απαιτούμενες προδιαγραφές για το προϊόν που θέλει να παράγει. The higher parts of Nemea, maybe 20 years ago, were considered too cool to try to promote red wine production. Now everyone goes there because they understand their grape variety Ayurgitico better. They know how to make these different style of red wines, more high acid, cooler fruit, less alcohol, and there you go. You have a new generation of great NMS coming. Well, I think also science has progressed and people better understand how to manage vines in cool climates as well as the hotter regions, how to protect the grapes in the warm areas, how to expose the grapes in the cooler areas. And I'm also seeing uh, quite a lot of technology in the wineries, and I'm, I'm sure that couldn't have been the case 20 years ago. I thought I could present you with uh, a lineup of 10 different Nemeas just to show you how this amazing Ayurgitico grey variety can be transformed into different styles of wine. So I would say that you can see that already a Yurgitico can adapt to very different styles. No matter what the grape variety wants to be, still the winemaker can adapt that grape variety into very different market segments. And uh, I think the, this is a very nice trio showing completely different approaches to a Yurgitico. We're in the heart of the Peloponnese, in Mandania, another great PDO zone producing excellent wines, just north of Tripoli. The vineyards grow in a plateau and are used to lower temperatures and more rainfall, so harvest comes later, beginning from the end of September to the end of October, and sometimes as late as November. That's really remarkable for an aromatic and delicate white grape at this latitude. 
but it's also indicative of the different styles of Greek wines and the complexity that's attributed to them, being cultivated in a land that has such climatic variations. Ναι, το κρασί είναι το αποτέλεσμα της επίδρασης, της ελληνικής πικιλίας και περιοχής. Η αλήθεια είναι ότι όλες οι παραδοσιακές ποικιλίε του παλιού αμπελουργικού κόσμου, στον οποίο βρίσκεται και η Ελλάδα, τριγώνται παραδοσιακά από τα μέσα Σεπτέμβρη και έπειτα σε περιβάλλοντα στα οποία η ποικιλία η τοπική οριμάζει στι καλύτερε δυνατέ συνθήκε, δηλαδή ήπιε συνθήκε. Αυτέ οι συνθήκε σε όλο τον κόσμο είναι περίπου το δεύτερο μισό του μήνα Σεπτέμβρη. Έτσι, αν δούμε την ποικιλία Πινό Νουάρ, που είναι μια πρώιμη ποικιλία που οριμάζει στην Ελλάδα τον Αύγουστο. Στην Βουργουνδία τριγέται μετά τι 15 του Σεπτέμβρη. Το ίδιο συμβαίνει και με την ποικιλία Σαρντονέ στη Βουργουνδία ή με την ποικιλία Σοβινιών στον Πορντό. Εξίσου όμω και για τι ελληνικέ ποικιλίε, όλε οι παραδοσιακέ ελληνικέ τόπο ποικιλίε τριγώνται την ίδια περίοδο. Το Μοσχοφύλερο στην Μαντινία, το Ξινόμαυρο στην Άουσα, το Αγιοργήτικο στην Εμαία. Ο σκοπό μα είναι δηλαδή να πετύχουμε την ορίμανση υπό αυτέ τι συνθήκε. Γι' αυτό και πρέπει να προσαρμόζουμε την ποικιλία στι τις θερμικές απαιτήσεις μάλλον της ποικιλία στο κλίμα της περιοχής. Εμείς έχουμε ποικιλίε όψιμες που ταιριάζουν σε περιβάλλοντα ανάλογα με τις ελληνικές σχετικά πιο θερμές συνθήκες. The main variety cultivated here is Mosco Filero, a reddish variety producing aromatic whites, although sometimes with a pinkish hue due to the grape's color. You don't really store a Mosco Filero. You drink it as soon as it's offered to you when it's fresh and young. This wine is perfumed with beautiful floral elements and vivacious acidity, and on the palate, citrus, floral notes, a lovely orange blossom. It's no wonder this is a favorite in the country, especially in the summertime where it goes so beautifully with salads and light meals. Το μοσχοφύλλερο καλλιεργείται σχεδόν αποκλειστικά στο οροπέδιο της Μαντινίας, σε μια περιοχή η οποία είναι από τις πιο δροσερές περιοχές της Ελλάδας, παρόλο που βρίσκεται στο, στο κέντρο της Ελλάδας, σε μια περιοχή που γενικά θεωρείται ε, θερμή περιοχή, είναι ιδιαίτερο το, το περιβάλλον στο οποίο καλλιεργείται και είναι σαν οι αρχαίοι Έλληνε να έψαξαν να βρουν για την κάθε ποικιλία την ελληνική το κατάλληλο περιβάλλον για να καλλιεργηθεί. Γιατί σε αυτό το περιβάλλον το μοσχοφύλλορο δίνει κρασιά που έχουν πολύ μεγάλη οξύτητα, που είναι όπως γνωρίζουμε σπάνια για μεσογειακή ποικιλία, για μεσογειακά κρασιά, δεν οριμάζουν, δεν αποκτούν υψηλό αλκοολικό τίτλο, αλλά δίνουν κρασιά πάρα πολύ ευχάριστα, δροσερά, που μπορούν να συνοδέψουν πολύ καλά διαφορετικά πιάτα από διάφορες κουζίνες, διαφορετικές κουζίνες και έχουν ιδιαίτερα αρώματα, κυρίως τερπενικού χαρακτήρα, δηλαδή πέταλα τριαντάφυλλου, αλλά και αρώματα όπως κίτρου, λεμονιού, καπνού, πολλές φορές. Είναι και αυτά με τον τρόπο τους ιδιαίτερα κρασιά. Και το μοσχοφύλλερο ανήκει στι λεγόμενε γκρι ποικιλίε. Δηλαδή, μια ποικιλία η οποία ενώ το φλοιό του στα φιλιού είναι σκούρο μπλε, το κρασί το οποίο παράγεται είναι λευκό. Είναι από τι ποικιλίε οι λεγόμενε γκρι ποικιλίε. Μοσχοφύλλερο can also be used to make sparkling wines using the Charmat or traditional method with second fermentation in bottle, similar to the techniques used in Champagne, France and Cava, Spain. The biggest island in Greece is our next stop. Crete has thousands of years of tradition in winemaking, but has evolved immensely as well. This is one of the best equipped wineries in Greece, where visitors can take a look around the estate, the production area, the cellar, and marvel at the views. The vines are grown at an altitude of 170 to 215 meters, where the soil is mostly limestone and clay with good drainage. The vineyards host both Greek and international varieties and are cultivated using organic farming methods. Fresh and aromatic whites, rich and robust reds, all have something different to offer. Some indigenous varieties include Vidiano, Crete's flagship white variety, Mandilari, 
and Kotsifali, a red wine with spicy elements of prune, leather, cinnamon, and red fruits that accompany Cretan fruit with its strong flavors quite well. This is the largest Bronze Age archaeological site on Crete. Konosos is also considered the oldest European city and a political and religious center of the Minoan civilization and culture. The palace of Konosos is huge, much bigger than the state of Vadi Petro, which is also Minoan. Konosos is the largest and most spectacular Minoan palatial center, and it's spread in 20,000 square meters. Built in levels with ashlar's blocks, its walls are decorated with colorful frescoes, and it's a place where tablets written in linear B script were found. Some of you might know Canossos from the legend of King Minos and the Minotaur in the labyrinth. The palace actually resembles a maze of rooms where people worked, lived, slept, worshipped their gods, but it also had big storage rooms where they kept their olive oil and wine. This ancient civilization was unbelievably developed for its time and the technology and architecture used were revolutionary. We're almost in the middle of the island of Crete, in a super important archaeological site in Vati Petro, a place only five kilometers south of Arhanes. Vati Petro was another Minoan settlement built as a Minoan country house during the Neopalatial period that was sometime between 1600 and 1450 BC. During the excavation, olive presses and a large number of pithi and a potter's kiln were discovered, but also the most ancient wine press in the world that can still be seen. This is how we know that Crete was one of the first, if not the first, winemaking areas in the whole world. Our next stop, the Aegean Sea and specifically the island of Santorini. Santorini is a dream come true and difficult to describe in words. If you were here with me, you'd agree. Where else can you find the lost legacy of Atlantis? Black volcanic sands, whitewashed houses, one of the most famous sunsets in the world, breathtaking views, fine restaurants, and of course, amazing local wines. Jacques Cousteau searched for the lost city of Atlantis here because it was believed that when the volcano erupted, it caused a huge tsunami that destroyed both Atlantis and ancient Minoan civilization. These banded cliffs of red, brown, and black, crowned with white lava clusters clinging to the cliffs of the island, are a striking reminder of the magnificence of nature. Akrotiri is a Minoan Bronze Age settlement that was buried in 1500 BC under tons of lava and ash after the volcano eruption. Like in Pompeii, the ash helped preserve the remains and some amazing frescoes that keep their beautiful colors thousands of years after they were made. The Assertico variety grows very well in the dry and harsh conditions of the island and takes up to 40% of the total production due to its ability to adapt, but also to its distinct taste qualities. It was quickly popularized, getting worldwide fame and recognition. No wonder a big percentage of the Santorini winery's production is exported to Europe, North America, Australia, Brazil, and soon China. The Greek wine is becoming mainstream. 
2012, for example, has been an excellent year for us. We had uh, more than 37% increase in sales in the US and more than 55% in Canada. Big names such as Skernik, uh, Frederick Wildman, Weinbo, uh, VOS or Verity, these are all important American names that are including Greek wines in the portfolios. Το ασύρτικο είναι η ποικιλία που καλλιεργείται κυρίως στη Σαντορίνη αλλά και στην υπηρετική Ελλάδα. Στη Σαντορίνη σε ένα ιδιαίτερο ε, περιβάλλον τόσο από άποψη εδάφους όσο και κλίματος. Το νησί της Σαντορίνης στα εδάφη έχουν δημιουργηθεί από την έκρηξη του ηφαιστείου και το κλίμα της περιοχής είναι σχεδόν ερημικό θα λέγαμε. Είναι πάρα πολύ ζεστό με αποτέλεσμα σε αυτές τις συνθήκες το ασύρτικο ενώ είναι μια ποικιλία που είναι αρκετά παραγωγική στη συνθήκες της Σαντορίνης να έχει μειωμένη παραγωγή και αυτό και να δίνει αρκετά συγκεντρωμένα κρασιά. Το μοναδικό χαρακτηριστικό του ασύρτικου είναι η πολύ ψηλή της οξύτητα που είναι πολύ σπάνια για μεσογειακή ποικιλία. Και επίσης ένα άλλο χαρακτηριστικό που θεωρώ ότι είναι ξεχωριστό είναι ότι παρόλο που καλλιεργείται σε πολύ ε, ζεστό περιβάλλον δίνει κρασιά τα οποία δεν έχουν κανένα χαρακτήρα μαρμελάδας που βρίσκουμε γενικά στα κρασιά ζεστών περιοχών. Απέναντίας, πέρα από τα ιδιαίτερα χαρακτηριστικά της, τα αρωματικά και κυρίως από τα αρώματα, ε, τα γήινα που έχει σαν κρασί που οφείλονται στο έδαφός της, έχει και κάποια άλλα πολύ φρουτόδια αρώματα όπως αρώματα κίτρου, λεμονιού, που είναι σπάνια για ποικιλία που καλλιέργεται σε ζεστό περιβάλλον. Santorini, mm, Santorini is a different story. I do believe that you you take a bottle. I'll give you a bottle of acidic from Thank Santorini. You. <laughs> you take it back home, live it for 10 years, and then give it blind to your friends, to your wine of friends, and tell them it's a Chablis Grand Cru and just spot the site and um, name the producer. The volcanic soil of Santorini is unique in the world and its character is passed on to the wine. Schist, slate, limestone, lava, and minerals containing iron, also pumice stone in the surface as well as deeper in the soil, make for a composition with a minimum of organic matter and water. Summer months are extremely hot and dry with no rain. The vine absorbs all the humidity it can during the cool evenings and the morning dew. The winds that are a trademark of the Aegean also have led winemakers to prune vines in low bushes and round wreaths in order to protect them, making them look a little bit like a bird's nest. The vineyards of Santorini are among the most ancient in the entire world because the sandy texture in the ground did not succumb to phylloxera, allowing the vines to have extremely long lifespans. All these winding little streets, I just love to get lost in them. It's as though time has virtually stood still here. Everything is so untouched and pure. All this peace and quiet, you can hear the distant echo of the sea. It's as though you can leave all your worries behind and just find your soul. a perfect place to unwind on a quiet beach with the whole Aegean Sea spread beneath your feet, a soft breeze keeping you cool, sipping fine Santorini wine. It's absolute bliss. This is an old and traditional winery, 
producing Santorini white wines from a Certico grape variety, but also some very good wines from interesting, rare, and authentic indigenous varieties unique to the Aegean Islands, such as Mandalaria and Mavro Tragano. The wines are deeply colored with concentrated dense plummy fruit and aromatic herbal accents. The earthy hints and tannic foundation suggest these wines have the capacity to age. Sweet wines from Santorini are especially interesting to wine aficionados. These Vin Santo wines are made according to a particular process. The grapes are left on the vines until they ripen fully. After harvest, they're laid out in the sun and sometimes in the shade to dehydrate and concentrate the flavors. Fermentation lasts until December, after which they put the wines in old or new oak barrels, always weighing 500 kilograms. Haul that before the wine even gets into the bottle. Greek wine might be difficult to sell. Is this an advantage or a disadvantage nowadays? I think the wine itself is easy to sell. It's, it's fascinating and, and great character and lovely flavors and, and really interesting to drink. The challenge will be the pronunciations of Agiordico, for example, and uh, Robola and mm -hmm. Xenon Marvo, forget it. <laughs> Very difficult. So I think actually that's Greece's biggest challenge is how to help people order these wines confidently in a restaurant. I think that in the world of wine, as we speak, being different is more important than being just good. So you can have an excellent Chardonnay, that's fine, but you can have many, many excellent Chardonnays. Can you have many excellent Xenomavros? Hmm, I'm not sure outside of Greece. In oh, Greece, I was just about loads to say, in Greece, excellent yes. <laughs> uh, so, you have something that is different, is unique, and it's a great sales opportunity for people that want to be proving that there are excellent wine professionals. Would you pay a lot of money for a sommelier that was proposing only great Bordeaux and great Burgundy? You know all that. Why? Why pay? Why pay someone? But if you want to explore a Robola, a great Malagouzia, then you should be paid a lot. Zagat, uh, which is the, the most popular restaurant guide in the US, uh, told us that in 29% of the top uh, New York restaurants, we see Greek wine in their lists. And also 34% of the Michelin stars uh, restaurants in New York include Greek wine in, in their list. This was something uh, unheard of a few years ago. Wine making is kind of art. And uh, you can uh, you can uh, give to ten wine ten winemakers. You can give them the same exactly quantity mm -hmm. and quality of grapes, the same tools, and then you get ten different wines. Because when you make a wine, you give yourself in it. We call it the wine industry, but it's not an industry. We have a story to tell, and this is the most charming thing about wine. The Greeks might be better known for being the architects of democracy or for giving us philosophy, theater, the Olympic Games, and a plethora of Greek words we use in everyday life. But they have an even longer wine history, one that stretches back at least 4,000 years. One of the best ways to get to know a country is by tasting it. What better way to get to know Greece than by drinking its wonderful wines? Cheers, Gambe.